All right, welcome everybody. It is our Rise Up and Carve Spoon Challenge Show and Tell Day today. We are doing Ruak Spoon Challenge uh, 15, I believe it is. Uh, so on Instagram, if you search for the hashtag Ruak Spoon Challenge 15, you will see the photos that everybody has posted up. Um, we are very happy to be talking through this one today. And we have Julian here, who was our very kindly provided our template as well as doing a couple show and tell demos. Those videos are uh, up on uh, the Rise Up and Carve YouTube channel. Uh, Julian first did a, a demo showing us how he axes out the blanks for these spoons because they are a relatively wide bowl. Um, so it's real easy to whack the back edge, the shoulder of your bowl and crack it as I did twice. Um, and uh, he also did a talk about the history of the Welsh cull spoon and uh, some of its design uh, elements. And so, yeah, so thank you very much, Julian. Uh, I think we all probably had a lot of fun with this one. So as is tradition, before we um, start uh, everybody going with sharing and, and showing their spoons, Julian, I'm going to ask you to just kind of give a, a quick little uh intro to your spoon uh, design and how you kind of came up with this one and maybe show an example or two of your spoons and then we'll kick it off with Oren who has asked to go first because he needs to leave soon. Hi everyone. Um, I was really encouraged to see the response to this one. It's always super great to see so many people um, enthusiastic about my very niche interest. Um, so thank you all for playing along. Uh, I loved having a look at the spoons that you've posted so far and I can't wait to see the rest. Um, I think I have said enough about Welsh cow spoons. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, um, there's several hours of me talking available on the Rise Up and Carve YouTube channel. Um, so if you haven't, if you didn't come along to those, um, you can, you can have a look at the recordings. But um, in brief, the Welsh cow spoon is a, a spoon design that evolved in Wales uh, for sipping soup or broth. Uh, cow spoon literally means broth spoon. Um, this is my interpretation of the design. And uh, I've provided a template for you that was based on this spoon in particular. Now uh, everyone has their own twist on it, um, but this was the original spoon. And um, having said that, let's pass the floor over to Oren. Awesome. Thank you. OK. So um, first of all, thank you very much, Julian. It was really nice to have all this um, kind of historical background of uh, about the spoon. I wish we could do this in, in if not all of them, most of them. I've, uh, gotten a chance at uh, Spoon Fest uh, here and there to do, try to mimic uh, a historical spoon. And it's, you can learn a lot from it and it is a lot of fun. And um, having also s some some uh, actual historical background about, about it really adds a lot of, uh, a lot to the spoon itself. So I really enjoyed that, that aspect of it. Um, this spoon was, was a challenge, here's, here's my spoon. Um, uh, of course, with the amount of extra cranks that it has and then the extra stop cuts I had to do to, to get this little uh, snail crawling on top of it. I had a little crack right here, so mine is a little rounder. I had to make it s smaller, not as bad as what happened to Andreas, but um, in the end, I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, I really like this spoon. That's all I have to say about it. So I think I'll do another. Beautiful job, Owen. Excellent. I love God, that's so cool the way you get those snails on there. <laughs> that's awesome. He feels really natural on it. I think he perfectly in this curve and uh, it doesn't uh, interfere with the holding it or. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. All right. Fantastic job as always, Owen. Excellent. All right. 
Uh, I, I think a couple other people said that they wanted to go soon. Uh, Kamal, I see you raising your hand, so let's let you go next. Uh, everyone, so I started this very late. Um, I started axing out on Wednesday. Um, oh. But I managed to get, well, three and a half. <laughs> um, it's a I half really, moon spoon. I really enjoyed them. Um, these are out of Apple. So. All yeah, right. Fun to make. I'll probably make some more. Awesome. So what happened? Did you did you have an accidental strike on the back shoulder with the other one or? Yeah, I didn't see it until I got this far in the. Yeah, uh, it happened to me. Kind of yep. So. Nice. Yeah. Fun. Thanks, Julian. Awesome job. All right. Quick show of hands. Who would like to go next? Uh, okay, Sebastian. Right. Thank you. This is my first Rurac challenge. So it was real fun. I uh, just joined the Rurac cult or clan <laughs> or madhouse or whatever you like to call it. <laughs> I like and cult, I, it works. Uh, cult is accurate. <laughs> and I made uh, one with a bit of decoration as I tend to do. It is uh, spalted beach and the beach is quite hard, so it took some effort to get these ships in. Uh, wow. I don't know to say other than I, it was really fun, and it's a totally different shape than I usually do with this down sweep, so I learned a lot. So thank you, Wim. Excellent, beautiful spoon. Great job. All right. Excellent job. Who would like to go next? All right, Ryan. Good morning, folks. I don't have much to say either. <clears throat> um, I've carved, well, I've got one and a half now. This one's I'm working on right now. This one's finished and another one cracked right after I axed it out. So it seems like this is the spoon of the cracking, although mine was at the front of the bowl. So I think it was in the wood, but uh, otherwise this is the finished one. Beautiful. Is that the, I'm, I'm enjoying the swoopy profile. This is pretty normal to what I do, but this is pretty extreme. And I think it's quite pretty. So that's it. So yeah, I'll do two. Some nice. Matching. Well, cherry, I assume. Looks like cherry. Uh, they are. Yeah, just cherry radially split. And yep. Nothing spectacular. No, no snails or uh, dolphins on this one. <laughs> Excellent. Beautiful job. Well done, Ryan. All right, who would like to go next? All right, Sean Warburton, I see you. Well, now, dolphins and yeah. So I did something a bit different with this one. <clears throat> I went slightly off the template a bit because I was going a bit nuts with designing. <laughs> It's like an Orange County Choppers uh, version of the Welsh call spoon. <laughs> Decided because it's Welsh, it needed a dragon or something on there. So, uh, so the bowl shapes sort of elongated. Wow. That's beautiful. That's incredible. Underneath. Lots of cut throughs, crazy angles. I mean, yeah, seriously, um, dude, that's incredible. It's not um, quite finished yet. I've got to do all of this side, but that side's sort of finished. So I was putting the uh, facets along this section here. It's sort of angled down. And wow. Side out there with the gouge. I'm just working on trying to get this transition in, in there, sort of. I can quite see. There you go. Facets to join up and stuff. Yeah. Wow, beautiful job. Big challenge. What kind of wood is that? Thanks, Julian. Um, this one's hazel. Um, I managed to get a really sort of 
big diameter log, which is unusual in the UK because it's usually just little twigs. So it's lovely to carve. Done some detail work in another spoon, which really held up well. So I thought I'd use it for this one. And there we go. Awesome, excellent job, spectacular, as always. Now, in in use, I'm wondering though, aren't those claws kind of kind of get in the way, like from you know, on the bottom of your mouth? Uh, right, but well, you know the claw was down away, so. Mm -hmm. Ah, there you go. All right, so you're still good for your side sip. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent job. Spectacular as always. Okay. Who would like to go next? By the way, my internet connection is somewhat unstable. I, I see you, Andreas. You'll go next. So if I freeze, you'll know what's going on. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to try something new here because it's not about me, but about the spoon. So, um, yeah, I actually tried four of them. Um, this one is uh, Plum. And I found out that there is a really big knot in, in this section here. Um, so I gave up on that. Then I tried another one, which is uh, elderberry. Um, well, I need to learn how to act better. And I found out that there is like, oh, wait, I got to oh, do somebody else. I, uh, I got a, uh, uh, somebody at the door. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right, we'll come we'll come back to you. No worries. <laughs> All right. Who would like to go next? All right, Sean Miller. All right. So here's my take on the call spoon. That's pretty. I went slightly off template as I always do. I usually just don't remember to print off the piece of paper at work so then I end up looking at it when I'm axing and then it's so on the side profile I didn't get nearly in enough curvaceous twist on the or flip on the handle as Julian has but put in a nice deep skinny keel there um this is a piece of silver maple which I've been saying the last couple of days to people on here, I had kind of always spurned as inferior to sugar maple, but it's actually really delightful to carve. Um, it has a little bit more color, it seems like, pinks and whatnot. And uh, I probably had the most fun on this, doing these facets on the back of the bowl, um, just kind of like radiating lines. Really cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I think the hardest things about this form for me was definitely the handle shape. I just rarely have, I think the, usually my tapers are a little bit, I don't know, it gets skinnier higher up on the handle. So it was hard for me to strike that balance of continuing to taper without just sort of like bottoming out the taper, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yep. And running into straight lines. I still kind of snuck in my little neck pinch that I tend to do on all spoons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I actually really enjoy doing call spoons, although the ones that I tend to do, I usually make them servers, uh, not eating spoons. This one's kind of similar. It's really a lot uh, deeper than an eating spoon would be. So I think even side sipping off it, the, the edge is just pretty thick, but um, it is pretty thin. I don't know if you can. If I can, I probably yeah. won't be able to catch the light right, but no, we can see it. It's translucent. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's that's my call spoon. Beautiful shape. The the I mean the the whole thing is very beautifully shaped. Your your but your bowl uh, shape is is really it, it's it's oval, but it's got a like slight difference to it that is just it's really visually pleasing. How did you do those um, facets on the back of the bowl? Are those actually, like, were those, like, cut in? Like, are they scalloped, each of those? Uh, they're not scalloped. I just used my my straight knife. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, when I was mostly rough shaping the back of the bowl, it wasn't nearly as organized. It was kind of just more of, like, a loose, I don't know, I was think of it as like honeycomb kind of style and then just mm -hmm. this morning I kind of started um 
yeah to sort of translate it into these steps you can actually see on the front it's a little bit sloppy as you get up to the rim and that's because i kind of ran out of material because i didn't really plan enough for this yeah. um, it was a little too close to the final shape and started getting a little thin there but um i usually just start at the back you know and start to establish that swoop by kind of you know pivoting through it um and starting mm. from either side and picking towards the middle and then you can kind of just keep building your steps down until you yep. get up to the rim and of course it gets trickier also at the rim especially with a, with a spoon that has this much depth to it because you're going across more and more end grain as you reach the front spoon. So hey can everybody please make sure that you're muted we're getting a lot of noise thank you So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's a, a nice thing about a wide spoon like this is it gives you that opportunity to sort of play with facets differently on the back. Like if this was an eating spoon, you wouldn't really be able to create a pattern like that, right? Because you just don't have the width to, to make yeah. it look interesting like that, I think. Very um, cool. Yeah. Really, really nice, Sean. Absolutely beautiful spoon. Thanks. Oh, um, I just wanted to mention... Um, lovely spoon so far um, i've been keeping pretty quiet just to let people sort of describe their own spoons but if you're interested in a word or two from me just shout out and i'll tell you what i think so um what was i going to say the, i i liked somebody i forget who it was somebody else did one i saw them post about it it's a it's a larger version of it and they did it as a serving spoon. And I thought this is like definitely one of those spoon shapes that is like a natural, I think, for, for a serving spoon in, a, in, a, in, in an even larger form. It's almost, uh, you know, uh, ladle-like um, in that sense. So it's, it's a cool form. So anyway, very cool spoon. All right, um, who would like to go next? Sorry, just before that, um, they did make ladles. Um, and they made like in-between size, like serving spoon ones as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It lends itself perfectly to all of those. And I, and I will say, actually, well, I'll wait until I, I go. Who would like to go next? All right, David. Hi, guys. I'm also pretty new at the spoon carving and also the spoon challenge. But here's my design. It's made from uh, birch. And uh, I didn't use the template. I carved along while Julian was explaining stuff. But I think uh, I, I didn't get the shape quite right because here the, the swoop should start at this point, but I have like another knuckle yeah, in, like in this part. Yeah, secondary hump. Yeah. Yeah. And also a big challenge for me was to get like this profile in a straight line because in the first iteration it had like a hump on the back because yeah. that's what I'm used to. But then I shaved it down and, and it, it's still pretty strong. So I'm, I'm confident in the design. Nice. Yeah, I, I, found, I found that too. Like I kept wanting to take more off of the back there of the bowl, but then I was afraid of getting too thin on my uh on the handle where it makes that transition so it's 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 hard to find that right balance point between having a nice curve into the bottom of the bowl uh and not thinning the back too too much uh yeah. and making your handle too thin julian yeah. can you just for a quick moment show your transition point at the back of your spoon uh yeah sure so here's um here's my spoon Um, what I'm really going for, um, and Sean mentioned something about avoiding straight lines. I have only just barely graced this spec for it to not be straight in line. Um, so it, it follows the profile up here of the tail flip, um, and but it doesn't really follow the curve, the the like swoopy curve here. It's more straight. So the extra thickness here gives extra sort of. Um, Uh, better light. It it gives an extra look to the to the hump if you do it that way. Yeah. And it's also really nice if you can find a bit of wood that has some grain that's going to complement this shape, like I did here. Yep. And on my other one, which is a bit flatter, 
you can see is a sort of more um, more gentle version of that detail. And um, uh, the other thing that I've I've seen on some people's spoons that I really like is people are adding a bit a few more details to this neck area, which I keep. Everything on my spoons is quite simple. I, I just really focus on the on on this shape, and I keep mm. the red subdued. Nice, thank you. All right, excellent, and welcome, David. Glad to have you with us. Um, okay, who would like to go next? Show of hands. I can't hear you. Okay, Sonny, you're up. Before Sonny goes, just again, a, a quick reminder to everybody, a big uh, round of applause and thank you, Sonny, for uh, maintaining our spoon templates on the website. I really appreciate all the work that you put into that. Awesome job. Yep, and and for those who are multitasking, uh, the new one is up just as of like 10 minutes before the call today. So uh, we will get to that at the end, but I did wanna let you know that it's, it's up there and, and waiting for you. Awesome. Um, so I made two. First one being in Black Walnut. This was during the axing demo. While I was kind of on mute and, and hidden, I, uh, I mainly did a draw knifing demo on my own, following along with Julian to a point. But this is on Black Walnut, and it's got a little bit of a twist where the um, sap line runs through it. So sapwood, heartwood. It doesn't exactly split down the middle, but it kind of made a, a nice, pleasing mm. uh, look to it. And uh, I, this one was a lot of fun. This one's fairly close as far as the amount of curve it has here. Um, it's not quite as delicate as Julian's. I mean, he goes for the, the super uh, delicate um, aesthetic and it is very, very pleasing, but this is more my style where it's a little bit more uh, durable and uh, you know, whack the kids with it if you need to. Uh, <laughs> then I made another one because I had a piece of cherry and I wanted to try one that was uh, oriented different in the, in the grain. I got this one pretty much centered right on, which I was happy with. Um, and also found as I was carving that I had a bit of sapwood that was running along the top. So I got a little bit on the lip of the bowl and a little bit on the tip of the handle. And I decided that's cool. to a diamond there. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, this was actually really challenging to do a, a diamond shaped handle because you, know, you screw up one bit and you gotta go and do all four sides again. Um, and then the grain actually had a nice, you know, kind of not feather spoon, but feather-esque look to it as it went across and in transition there. Wow. So, again, it's a little thicker than what I would want as a usable spoon, but it, as far as the aesthetic goes, I think it turned out pretty cool. And the, the shape led itself to this, you know, really pleasing looking sculpture. Uh, so yeah. thanks again, Julian. Uh, this was kind of fun to do, it pushed my... Um, abilities, especially with the wide bowl, narrow neck, and uh, going for something that is, uh, you know, out of the ordinary for me. Really cool, Sonny. That, that's an awesome looking spoon. Thanks. Thanks again. Great job. Well done. All right. Who would like to go next? Show of hands. All right, Dan, you're up. Great. Um, yeah, this is also my first challenge it's almost my first kind of time on zoom as well and i i didn't uh download the template or anything i was just following along with julian and kind of checking his out and i think i started off with this one and it has the cleft surface on the handle and i put some iron oxide on it just to kind of bring it out a little bit so you can really see that oh yeah and it's got kind of a little bit of a raised back i kind of on some of my other spoons, I like the idea that it it looks a bit like a kind of bouncing ball, the kind of arc a ball would make if it was bouncing. So it kind of looks mm. quite springy. Um, and asymmetrical bowl, I think I can't make anything <laughs> symmetrical. That feels really nice in the mouth. Like it can go all the way in the mouth, but then, because I haven't made it so deep, a few little like facets on the back. Beautiful. I quite like the short handle. The little curve quite nice and then i made this one which is based on it's based on these shells i have a couple of shells and i kind of overlay them so they're a bit more kind of asymmetrical and i quite like that little pink handle because it's my favorite color 
Nice. I think it's not my favorite color. It's my favorite color to paint spoons. But I really like playing with this, um, where where the handle is kind of coming into that neck, and I've tried to create like, I don't know if you can really if it's really picking that up. Um, but just playing around with what like pinching the neck and kind of undercutting the rim a little bit, mm. things like that, quite good fun. Yeah, I think you can do a lot with these. Actually, there's a lot going on in them, uh, but I really like the kind of the sort of stick handle and the way it can really swivel. It's it's a lot of fun. And then I just started making this one with a bit more of a crank and having that kind of very slight continuous lift with the little bumps. We've got a bit mm. more crank, slightly longer handle, kind of basic. And then I've just been doing this one, which doesn't have actually much of a kind of hump on it and these are all made from the same log of um sycamore and then i yeah. i've just started putting a bit of decoration on the side beautiful the, the handle because i'm i think i'm so used to seeing it on the top or maybe on the bottom that i quite like it on the side because that's the way that you're using it it's more kind of on the side once again feels pretty good in the mouth yeah it's a it's a very fun design i think the hardest thing i find is definitely doing because I'm trying to undercut the rim mm. kind of has this appearance of maybe a bit more floating. It looks a bit lighter than it is. Um, I think the thing I was struggling with the most is to figure out where to put the deepest point, where and how quickly will it kind of transition and where mm. to keep it so it doesn't uh, break. And I think, yeah, that what this one's maybe a bit more in the middle. But trying to keep a nice curve all yeah. the way and just flatten out, I think, is the trickiest, trickiest part. Yeah, I, yeah, it was it was good fun. Yeah, I really liked kind of being able to chat to Julian about some of the history. Like Oren said, it was really nice to kind of get an idea of and just talk. I think just talk about woods they use, all those kind of different things. And I think I'll definitely make some more of them. No, good fun. They look nice as a little like a uh, bouquet. <laughs> yep. I got you. So, <laughs> when when Where you say the yeah. when you yeah. say that you don't do symmetry, is it because you don't like to do symmetry, or you just find it challenging to get the symmetry right? Um. So I always see it as similar to when I was doing art, is that I learned how to draw correctly, and then once you learn that. The, the fun is to just go elsewhere. So I think when I first started, I spent years trying to get things completely symmetrical. And I have a way that I, a way that I can get things perfectly symmetrical. But I think symmetry is pretty, but then asymmetry is beautiful. I think asymmetry is what I see out in nature. I don't really see these really perfect things. I see things that are kind of balanced. I think that's what I always go for. Not yeah. necessarily. Asymmetry. I think, yeah, it just reflects what I see in the world more than symmetry. I think the thing that I find, like, because I, 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 I tremendously admire those who do asymmetry well, because, like, my asymmetry is very obviously somebody that was going for symmetry and failed, <laughs> as opposed to a beautifully balanced asymmetry, um, and it's hard to get that right. It's just, I find it really hard. It's even harder than getting it symmetrical. In, in my yeah, I think that's, that's the that's the fun of it is that it's harder and then now I've learned some tricks of how to get asymmetry immediately and it's quite I think there's some like uh, I kind of carved spoons and then I chopped the the neck off so now I have these kind of just bowl templates that are completely just a shape that I've drawn on a piece of paper overlaid it and then just carved it so they're kind of and then I could, it means I can flip them anyway. So now I, I could have it this way. You know, I could have it like that. I could put it like that. I could put it like that. And I can just move it around mm. that I get the shape that kind of lines up with a kind of line. And I think this, the cow spoon definitely lends itself to a bit of asymmetry. Because I'm thinking this one is less of a, a supping spoon and kind of more of a general spoon. So with a nice long leading edge, I can mm. cut my and I could really scrape the whole bowl and really yeah. kind of get in with the bowl. And it doesn't feel too wide. Yep. Yeah, feels good. Bit of a nose banger, maybe. I hit my yeah. nose a little bit. 
Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, well, I'll, I'll never mind. I'll talk to you about it later. All right. Um, let's see. Who would like to go next? All right, Andreas is back. He's ready to go again. Here we go. Andreas, take two. Quick, everyone, mute him. <laughs> I, uh, I just uh, checked for the other parcel that's going to arrive today, and I don't see anybody in the, in the vicinity. So um, anyway, uh, this is the, uh, the first try. The second try, uh, it doesn't, well, it's, it's basically not that much of a spoon more like a club but then um i tried a third one and i actually was kind of pleased with the uh with the form um but this is this is birch and um i don't know exactly what happened to it but um it just cracked the bowl and then somebody said well you can still make a golf spoon out of it so I did. <laughs> um this is just sharpie uh this is yeah this is birch and then i did a, a third try and that one actually worked out quite, pretty well i think um i'm still struggling with the rim uh because some somehow it always seems like it's uh, uh the rim dries out really fast um so that gets like brittle and then well i end up with this kind of stuff yeah well, it's pretty good but this is a, a piece of pith this is also elderberry um i got it fairly smooth and um well i i, I do like the swooping uh of the of the spoon um yeah so and i i i made something of a finial here on this side so that's um that's that's it nice I, I haven't tried it yet, but I guess it's okay. Uh, the bowl could be a bit thinner, but you know, um, I'm still uh, still learning. So yeah, so that's all. Excellent. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I like I your. A, I like. Go ahead. I did a Chucky. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, yeah, here, here, exactly here. So yeah, that's. Um, well, that's not good. <laughs> uh, commemorable i guess indeed so yeah i like, like your second one your second one your second attempt there uh, i think that should be called the traditional welsh cudgel spoon <laughs> perfect for perfect for basil faulty for whacking manuel in the forehead with oh yeah 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 yeah, good one. yeah. excellent uh, poor manuel I excellent all, all, i all, all, always felt sorry for the guy indeed all right excellent job great job andreas who would like to go next who's up okay sean Tillett, and then ian sorry i didn't have my hand up i was scratching my head <laughs> oh, oh oh i'm sorry <laughs> no no it's absolutely fine um so there's the cool spoon so one of the things that uh was suggested was it should be plain so or the the, the kind of it should be unadorned and i, I just couldn't help myself <laughs> um <laughs> it kind of made me want to adorn it all the more so if i can get it a bit closer obviously we can see the I, i've pierced through both sides um which meant I had to make this slightly wider than I originally wanted. I was going to go slightly thinner, but then when I thought if I'm piercing it through, I don't want it to lose too much weight there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Second ago, a, a pineapple. Nice. Slightly better than the first. The first one was kind of squares that went straight across. So yeah. And then I looked up a picture of a pineapple and realized that's not how pineapples look. <laughs> um, I found it really complicated to carve. Uh, th this dip into here and the very flat bowl. I, yeah. I can't remember 
last time I carved a spoon with a flat top to the bowl. So <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at at least two years I last did that. So I, I, I found that a lot more difficult than I imagined I would. Um, but yeah, re- really nice template. I, I will carve some more because I, I think it's it's going to push me for a few different things. So yeah, yeah thank you very much. Yeah, it's open to so many different kind of approaches and decorative possibilities. It's a really cool template that way. Um, yeah. So I would call that. I would call you. Uh, I would almost turn those into like chain link. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's like a chain link spoon. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very cool, Sean. Excellent job. All right. Ian Glendinning, you are up. Hello. Yeah, I, this is my first one, which I didn't bird cherry. This was actually done about a week and a half before the template came out. So I knew the template was coming. So this I think is loosely hey, based Ian? on the arms one. So, Ian? Yeah. Oh, there we go. For some reason, your video was completely black. Like, I wasn't seeing anything. Oh, right. Was I the only one seeing that? Uh, no, I can't see it either. Oh, uh, it's because I'm seeing a yeah, I'm seeing a message that says your network bandwidth is low. Okay, that's all right. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't see me, just skip to someone else, and I'll. I'll uh, it's all right. Uh, it's all right. I can see you now. So go ahead. Right. Any, I'll be very quick then. Right. So I've been using this for about a week and a half. I got a bit obsessed with why they'd put a handle in the middle of the bowl and not here. But So I continued carving the one based on uh, Julian's template. So that's fairly accurate to the template, a wee, wee scoopy bit at the end. A set of alder. And then I just start to muck about with having the bowl slightly off centre. Mm. So that's one in snake bark maple. And then my final one that I did this morning is even further away from the, the centre of the bowl. So uh, I'm going to start using this one next week and just see how it feels. Because I felt this one didn't quite feel right in the mouth when you were doing your soup. Yeah. So I cannot make a crack to it. So it's, it's probably about five o'clock as opposed to six o'clock. So yeah, but a lovely template to carve. I loved it. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, beautiful line. Yeah. So no. Yeah, I I like that off center idea. I started playing around with drawing stuff off center, yeah. even just with like a regular egg shaped bowl, but then canting it slightly. Yeah, um, yeah. I just felt that because it was designed for sort of watery broth. Yeah. Which was fine, but unless you're, I mean, I, I eat soup virtually every day, and I was just finding it very messy and very slurpy. So uh, hopefully, come Monday, I'll test run this one and see if that makes any difference. Uh, but yeah, no, fantastic template, lovely lines to work with as well. So many different ideas. I, I did sort of muck about with a bit of chip carving and cold rosing and things on that one, but. But I think it'd be great as a serving spoon. I think it'd be awesome as a serving spoon. Yep. So I think I might try cool. That. Yeah, that's neat. Awesome. Well done, Ian. Thank you. All right. Who would like to go next? Uh, okay. I see Kate has got her hand up. Take it away, Kate. Good morning, or I should say, hey, hey. <laughs> it's morning for me. Um, so forgive me because it's. 5.45 in the morning. So wow. when I first um, started carving my spoon, my cowl spoon, I just gave thanks that I wasn't a woman in Wales in 1800. <laughs> um, and then I also gave thanks that I could carve a spoon because I felt like the women in Wales were not carving the spoons. Um, so I thought that was, I live in an age where I can carve a spoon. And anyway, I don't know. I just thought that was something to think about. 
Um, and so anyway, I don't know. I just carved this little one, which is on my, my um, thing. And I don't know what happened, but I ended up doing like so many sloopies. I swooped the back down instead. Um, so it's actually pretty comfortable to hold. But um, anyway, so. Nice. I don't know. I just, uh, yeah, so that there's that one. And so I don't know if I like it or not, actually. Can't decide. <laughs> but I do love this template. I kind of wish I could, I need to find some more time to carve more. I did make this little one last night. Uh, it's roughed out, but I did kind of leave some nice little yeah so it, it's not finished yet but um it's tiny <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh anyway i think it's fun to carve tiny one so um anyway yeah i guess that's all i made that the two well i don't know if i'll finish the second tiny one but um anyway i love um, uh I love learning about history and i just appreciate my place in history so thanks yes. for the uh mm. history of the call spoons julian um no thanks for participating those, those are lovely i was just going to interject and say i have also carved a miniature one and i'll go and get it so you can see it's like a like a, a mini welsh call baby spoon Yeah, I have to say, I think from seeing that, I'm definitely now going to go out and carve a tiny cow spoon. I, right? I like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, for anyone who doesn't know, um, uh, I have a two-year-old daughter. Um, she's 20 months old, actually, but the, the point is I wanted a spoon for her as well because the spoons that we use are obviously too big for her little mouth. So I, uh, I carved this one for her. Mm -hmm. um, so as you can see, it's... it's it's the exact same design. I just scaled it down. The bowl is slightly smaller, um, and it's got the same same swoopy handle. This one's probably a little bit more swoopy, actually. So you, you can see there's a there's a variation in all the ones I make. They're not all the same. I I play around with the profile quite a bit. Yep. Yeah. Um, and also, um, child's cow spoons existed historically. Um, mm. They just had they just had smaller bowls. Um, so even, uh, of course, in history, people were carving child-sized spoons for their children just the same. Yeah, this one will probably go to my four-year-old too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right, great job, Kate. Thank you. All right, who would like to go next? All right, George, and then Suzanne. So um, I made two call spoons. Um, the first one, um, so the, I, I carved a call spoon a few weeks ago with Kevin together, and um, I looked at the barn book, and um, I just found out that they like really easy and really fast to carve, and they are like some. I, I thought this is, could be a good way to mass production a spoon in early ages or something like that. Um, and then I get hop on the template from Julian and I realized that it's like much more grain change here and there and much more complicated. And <laughs> the bowl is like much more difficult because of this oval square, um, other direction as usual size and everything. Um, but after Xing it out and swearing a little bit, um, I get quite confident with it and I liked it. So um, they are two spoons from the same log. And this was my first one and I just made it without the template being uh, signed on, on it. Uh, and I didn't know that um, the car spoon is normally like here uh, ending and I've made the keel like fading out a little bit, but then it gets like really thin so i'm much more pleased with the second one which is also quite deeper and yeah try to play with the facets on the back as well uh, hollowed the handle out a little bit 
because I think it's it's nice uh, rest for the sump. Um, didn't give so much crank to it, so it's not a total side zipper. It's also more like a crank for normal eating. Um, try to bring a little bit back through on the back of the bowl to make it a little bit more elegant. Yeah, and just really try to follow pretty much the template and didn't do too much creative, crazy stuff with it. So just made two card spoons and liked it. Nice. Thanks. I actually really like the one where you brought it to a point uh, on on that keel. I thought I think it looks really cool. I granted that it might be too thin to be, be feel strong, but it looks amazing. Yeah, you it's 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 shaking a little bit when I I put a little yeah. pressure on but, it. But, but it, again, it's I mean, still, it's like, like it, usable. It, right. It's I mean, it's meant for for soup though. It's not like you're trying to scoop ice cream with it. So you know, it should it should hold up. I would think. Very cool. Nice job, George. All right. Uh, I think we said who? Wait, who did I? Oh, Suzanne. Hi. <laughs> so I I thought I uh, tried to follow the template, and I only had like pine, so it was very soft. That helped a lot. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, but it was also very boring, and I didn't do anything like spectacular carving wise. And I didn't get the memo that it should uh, stay unadorned, so I just painted it. <laughs> Beautiful design on the paint. I think you did. It looks fantastic. Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> awesome. Well done. How did you find the pine to carve? I mean, it was nice and soft, but did you have trouble with tear out or anything like that? Because that's one of the complaints I hear when people carve pine is because it's so soft, it can be kind of tough to get clean cuts. I think I have um, something around the bowl. That's always a problem, but yeah. I also do sandpaper, so I just sanded it down. There you go. <laughs> hey, if it gets you there, go for it. It's all good. <laughs> awesome. Great job. The painting looks a little bit like traditional German or, or South German paintings on, on, uh, yeah. on farmers. Yeah. Uh, how do you say? Carbon first things. Yeah. I have uh, roots. Really nice. um, my roots are Yenish, it's, um, it's Swiss and Austrian gypsies. So the gypsy wagon design was on my mind when I did this. <laughs> yeah, it definitely has that look. Really, really cool. Beautiful job. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Who would like to go next? All right, John. OK, can you? Yep. All right. So it was in just, I was trimming a tree out of the back, which was sycamore, just as Julian was talking about his uh, prefer material so it was ideal so it's just quite plain swoopy and I end up with keel something like that too but it's the sun's actually come out here so it's actually quite hard to see because normally it was, it was okay earlier but the sun's decided to put in an appearance I couldn't access one out as much as normally uh, so there's quite a lot more carving uh, with a knife rather than with an axe so it took a bit longer but uh, it was still fine and it's it works fine and so it's a plain spoon and it goes awesome so that's about that excellent great job john nice job all right who would like to go next patrice All right, so I was like Sean um, Tillett, who said, if you tell me I can't decorate it, I'm going to decorate it. But <laughs> I, um, drew the temp <laughs> I drew the template instead of printing it out. And so I think I drew it a little 
too narrow. And so I lost a lot of um, width right here. And so it looked a little unbalanced. And it's funny because I didn't ax this, I just whittled it away. So I started off with so much wood and then I ended up with like hardly any right there. <laughs> and so it got a little too thin and I thought it was too dangerous to decorate it or go any thinner on the bowl. So I just started sketching out like different ideas for how to decorate. And I found this cool cord and just wrapped it around and I kind of liked um, the aesthetic of it. Nice. And, um, but it's got a really nice feel. I really like the end shape of it. I made this a little bit curved as well. And um, overall, I just think I didn't use a plain grained wood. I did not not decorate it. Um, so just a little bit off, but I think it turned out okay. That's it. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Great I haven't job. seen anyone put um, any cord on their spoons before, but if no, I you've like it. seen this before, let me know because I'm interested in that look combining. It almost um, looks like um, fibers you know how, like, and wood. Like Japanese will take and do like the um, cordage, you know, on their bamboo fencing and stuff like that, and it's tied. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and it, it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. It's really neat. Yeah, I definitely like that Japanese aesthetic as well. So I wasn't going for that per se, but I like um, that aesthetic. So, yep. Very cool. It's beautiful. What definitely kind of nice. Say it is? What's that? What kind of wood did you say it was? Oh, I don't think I did. Um, it's cherry. Oh, it is so cherry. So okay. it started off like a billet, like about that big. And I okay. don't know how it ended up <laughs> so thin right there. <laughs> Patrice the wood beaver. <laughs> Doing away all the wood. Excellent job. All right. Let me get back to my gallery view. Who would like to go next? I can go. Okay, hold on. I have three people simultaneously. So okay. we'll do Kevin, Chris, then Sean. Okay. So I'm really attracted to the, you know, I like the idea of carving a historical spoon. And I started carving these a little bit before everybody else just talking to Julian. I like this sort of, um, I'm kind of, I have some friends that are really into, really into food, like everybody probably does. And I want to give them a spoon that really makes a splash, you know? I want them to have one that they can pull out in a special occasion and be like, ah, I'm going to eat this soup with my hand-carved Welsh call spoon. And <laughs> most of them, you know, already have probably number nines, which is the most glorious of all the spoon. Kevin, <laughs> not your number nines again, my friend. What? <laughs> oh, 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 George. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> God, I didn't realize how much I was going to upset George by bringing it up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you can stop that now. We, we are on 15. Come on. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, a, it's a shape I love. I mean, I actually carved this. When I did the number nine, I carved a call spoon variation. Do you guys remember <laughs> the... <laughs> You guys remember the number nine call spoon variation from a couple of get it. Number nine. Oh, Jody, no, Jody. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Jody. Oh, Jesus. Oh, excuse me. Oh, my God. What is it with you people? Every week, there's got to be a, like some special performance art piece that you people are involved in. Come on. What a mess. Oh, she... <laughs> anyway, I'll try not to bring it up again. I didn't realize it was such a touchy topic. Yikes. So I did carve two regular number 15s here. This one is in cherry. And this is the Ooh. one, like of all my spoons that sit kind of in my pile upstairs, I feel like this one really grabs your eye. I feel like. Yeah. That's and a beautiful it, spoon. Yeah, I was really pleased with the way it came out. I think it's a combination of the the shape is unusual. It's got some nice, real elegance to it, and it um, it's I think it's a, a little bit smaller, so it's more delicate than the template allows for. And some, or I guess the template 
is requesting. And some call spoons I've seen are really huge, bulky things, almost like, you, you know, like l l ladle. So it was fun to make a smaller, delicate v v v v version of it, which is what I think I like about Julian's in the first place. And then the second one I made out of black walnut. Um, and this nice. one's cool. I think Patrice mentioned in a previous template when there's a spoon within the spoon. And I don't know if you can see this one has a spoon. Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool. It's even like a Welsh. It's even got the Welsh yeah. dolphin thing going on at the, yeah. So that was Dude, just- that's awesome. It was just lucky, but it's cool. Um, so this one's a little bit, you know, larger. I think it's closer to the template size. So those are my two. I'm excited to give these away to people. I think they'll really like them because they're- Oh, absolutely. Some people I think want a spoon that's approachable so they'll actually eat with it. And other people I think want something that's outrageous and fun and artistic. And I think to my American eyes, this accomplishes that second one. Absolutely. That's spectacular. That walnut one. I mean, they're, they're both gorgeous. Did you do anything to treat that cherry or is it naturally that dark? Is it all heartwood? No, it's black cherry. Yes, it's all heartwood. And when I oil my spoons, I do three coats of oil and they sit on the windowsill for about two weeks. And I think okay. the sunlight just really darkens them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sunlight will darken the cherry over time anyway. So. Sometimes they're light like this when I start and then they oiling and the sun darkening really changes them, but they get this really nice orangey brown warm color. Yeah, beautiful. Thanks. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful Thanks job. Lot. Thanks a lot, George and Jody. Now I have a mess <laughs> to clean up. <laughs> you bunch of wackadoodles. Um, I really All like right. your, well, Sorry, I, I really like delicate one there, Kevin. It, it reminds one? me of um, your more delicate one reminds me of some of the earlier spins that I carved that, that I was showing you. Um, yes. compared to the slightly larger one that we did for the template. Oh, I should say that I, um, when I made this one, I hadn't yet seen Julian carve one. I was just copying designs from his Instagram. Mm. And I did this m a way that made sense to me and it was horrible. It took me hours and hours and hours and it was tedious. And I was like, this is not a natural way to carve a spoon. And then when he said it was an easy shape that people could really, that people could really hammer out. I was like, say what? And then he he showed his steps, and I cut. You muted yourself, Kevin. Yeah. Then I carved the second one doing his steps, and it was way easier. So throughout the challenge, anytime was someone was struggling, I said, "You should really watch his video and follow his steps. It makes a big difference." So thanks very much, Julian, for making that easier. I still, even with your steps, Julian, I don't see how anybody banged these things out in fifteen. <laughs> Uh, we'll have to do another video where none of you interrupt me and I'll bang one out in 15 minutes. Okay, cool. Speed carving. I like it. Let's do it. All right. Chris, you are up. All right. <clears throat> oh, great job, Kevin, by the way. Thank you. Sorry, Chris. Go ahead. I don't know. So I, I carved a couple of them in Sycamore. Um, as you can see, I had a little boo-boo and uh, I, I can't, <laughs> you know, I guess it's like, you know, it's my version of Patrice's cord. There you um, go. And uh, luckily I carved a couple. I did carve an American sycamore, which I'd never carved before. Um, and, you know, I know it's not quite the same sycamore, but at least it's somewhat related. Uh, I did have some issues with the swoops, you know, chasing that grain change. Yeah, you know, I just yeah. kept going and going and going. And, and so, you know, I cracked this one in oiling it this morning. I didn't like this one as much. And I mean, I love the template and design. I just didn't like this version. And uh, so luckily I had a second one um, since I cracked that one and uh, promptly cracked this one as well. Oh and, no. Uh, <laughs> and, and I don't quite understand this one. You know, this one had a very short, short grain and uh, you know, it, it made sense to me. That's why I wasn't too worried about oiling the second one. And this one split, you know, it was, it was you know, a pretty long, long grain. So I don't really know what happened. But anyway, uh, I'm chalking it up to the sycamore and uh, uh, who knows. But anyway, yeah. I, it was a fabulous experience. I sure appreciate uh, all the historical context and uh, I'll carve uh, quite a few more, but I think I'll, I'll go back to 
walnut and cherry. I trust how, it a little bit more. How thin did you get that on that portion of the, the handle where it's coming down in? Because it looks I pretty. Mean, it is it is fairly thin, and uh, um, but it's certainly not any thinner than I would have carved in walnut right. cherry and had had issues. So Interesting. I don't know. Because um, you certainly got enough but, height there. Otherwise, I it really to... love the sycamore. Did it split? Did it split? Like, like, can you just by pointing to it? Where, where did the split run? Almost it, you know, it was a really long split, almost from the tip of this tape to the tip here. So it wasn't like you know, really short, short right okay. across. I mean, it was so, interesting. I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, it is what it is. Um, but otherwise, Ooh. I really love the wood, and uh, um, it finishes nice and. So we'll see. Maybe I'll just carve a chunkier one. But, but thanks a ton to everyone. It was, it was a great experience. Yeah, excellent job. All right. Uh, I think we said Sean would be next. That's Sean with a W. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, so I, I, this was my first challenge and my first uh, template. And I started with uh, using um, Sonny's um, The Drawing. And um, I learned I learned a whole bunch uh, with this uh, project, including, you know, these templates really matter. If these templates are not cut right, um, I will continue to make this uh, not a 90 degree, but more like an 87 degree in all my spoons. So good value to use the scissors properly. Um, and then I also learned, uh, here's my first attempt. This is maple. And I also learned to pay attention and to maybe not to be so engaged in conversation while on <laughs> rise up and park but again a lot of fun and i think this came directly because of not paying attention but also because of course the spoon is so unique uh, well for me of course because it's uh, oval and normally my spoons there's a lot more wood there so i kept on going um and then i it's my second attempt was mulberry and you can obviously see that the bowl is way too big it really pushed the boundaries of my knife um, mm. So I, I next time I thought, I, well, let's try to follow the template more, which I, I'm working on now, which is butternut, and I think I got the the uh, bowl a little bit better. It's still pretty chunky. It's certainly not uh, like Kevin's delicate. I don't know what you mean by delicate, but I'll, I'll get there eventually. I think, um, Julian, this is a wonderful design. I got to tell you, I have to force my kids to look at my spoons. I have to actually take them and put them in their hands. Um, <laughs> they <laughs> look at this. These spoons were sitting on the table and all my three kids said, hey, dad, nice spoon without even prompting. So thank you. And uh, thank you all for sharing. This is wonderful. I really enjoyed it. Nice, nice job. All right, who would like to go next? All right, Michael, you're up. And then Darren. All right, thanks. Um, yeah, thank you for doing the template, Julian. Um, so this one is Apple, um, and I really love the curves on it. Um, you know, I didn't so much do the keel, um, you know, that you had in the template. Um, I sort of got a little panicked, sort of got, uh, time got away from me. So it's probably sort of more in lines, you know, with the way I do my regular handles. I don't do eater spoons very often. Um, I ended up being really happy with the, the way I got the bowl shaped. Um, I think it's, pretty close to symmetrical. Um, you know, it's not quite the oval that was in the template, um, but uh, that's just the way things work out. But um, yeah, I really do love the contours. I like the, the flip I got on it. So was really happy about that. And then, you know, I think just like everybody, it's, you know, it's always really interesting trying to figure out how to get that transition around the neck area. Mm. But um, yeah, so really fun. And I really, I, Julian also pre uh, appreciate all the history that uh, you added to the context for the spoon. So I think, think that was really great. So yeah, and I'll post it later. It just, just kind of uh, finished last night. So I haven't done the post yet, but that'll happen soon. I really like that bowl shape. That's a cool looking bowl shape. That's a, that looks like it would be a really nice, like almost like, look, like a, like a small sauce ladle or a, um, I mean, how, but as, as a, as an eating spoon, have you actually tried eating with it? Yet? Is it... I finished finished it last night, so oh, yeah, no, I haven't. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty tempted to. I want to try a bigger version for sure. You know, sort of along yeah. the ladle. Um, when I first looked at the template, um, that's kind of what I was thinking. Um, and then you know, as I saw the posts and stuff, and I'm like, oh wait a minute, it's an eating spoon. 
um, you know, so that I had to go back. Um, but I want to make yeah, one. It's, so a broth, I, it's a broth spoon, so it works. I yeah. mean, it's, you know, as a, as yeah. a, as a, like an, like a corner tipper or, or however you would, would right. do it. What yeah. kind of wood did you say? Uh, apple. That's beautiful. Really, really Thanks. nice. Great job. Thanks. All right, Darren. Hi, everyone. Um, so here we go. Um, this was from a piece of birch. Um, I did a lot, <laughs> what a lot of other people have done. And when I was acting out, I lost a quarter of an inch off that side. So <laughs> I've tried to match it up on the other side and I've ended up with not quite a circle, certainly not an oval, but it, it works. I've, I've eaten with yeah. it, it works functions. Um, and then when I got to the final, I'd finished it. And then I, you, you know, when you look at it and you think, oh, I might just do a little bit more there. So I wanted to just refine the hump a little bit and I ended up slicing an eighth of an inch off. Oh no. So, <laughs> yeah. Quite as pronounced as it is on the template. Um, yeah. But I, I, I've learned a lot through doing this, you know, with the, 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 the curves and, you know, sort of fighting with the grain. Things like that. Um, yeah, it was very interesting. It was it was nice to know a bit more about the history of the spoon as well from Julian's talks. Um, people always associate Wales with the Welsh love spoons, but to know that there's something else that's associated, another another type of spoon associated with the history of Wales is interesting to learn. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm quite pleased with it. It's I think it's only the third spoon I've made that hasn't broken off at the handle, so. <laughs> <laughs> quite happy with it looking forward to doing the next challenge excellent nice job thank you Beautiful. so you said it's birch yes yes excellent uh, I, I i picked it up um i think it was the day before julian did the first talk you know with the axing out and i was a little bit impatient i started axing it out before julian did the talk mm. and uh, it wasn't a huge log so i had to use cut my billet uh, tangentially and, and then in, when I watched Julian's talk and he said use a, a use the radial section and I, I don't know if that by doing what I did I don't know if that's what weakened yeah in maybe the form. and that's possible I don't, I don't know I'm still learning but I enjoyed it so yeah nice excellent job okay. yeah, all right you. well done Darren I think the square bowl in the hump looks really great. If you didn't say it was a, based on a mistake, I wouldn't have known. I think. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I think the same thing too. I remember when I saw you post that spoon, I was like, oh, I love the square bowl. And uh, yeah. the, the other thing I was going to mention is um, sometimes you look at the old ones and they look square and you realize it's because someone scraped it on the bowl for an eternity of time. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. Who would like to go next? All right, Jody, you're up. All right, I ended up with two spoons and this one is from Cherry. This one was maple. And I tried to do the radial cuts. So um, the maple turned out fine. The cherry, the log that I had was a little bit too small. So I got the sapwood heartwood difference there and I didn't really like that so I ended up putting this one in the baking soda and water mixture mm. and <clears throat> the maple was about the color of this wow. so um, I didn't really want an eating spoon that was so light colored so I baked this one but um, I like how they came out they're both um, almost identical but um, I think that it was a challenge like every step, it seemed like there is a little bit of a challenge, but um, getting something like this angle here was new for me. Mm. So it was fun to work on and I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out. Yeah, well, you should be. It looks fantastic. Thanks. Excellent job. Very well good. done, Jody. All right. Uh, jump back to my gallery view, and who would like to go next? All right, Brad. And then Lua, was that you raising your hand also? Okay, so Brad and Lua. 
So I think I'm unmuted now. Um, I think I made five or six of these. I had made a couple of um, spoons based on looking at barn do them on videos and they were coming out very, very sort of flat, um, very shallow because I really wasn't mm. paying much attention. And I had just developed a, uh, I like making a little hump here. So the first few of these that I made, I made a, um, a cull spoon, but I left this as a hump. And mm. then I got excited about this shape is a lot like a Nordic ski. It's like cross country skiing. So I made another one and I accentuated the hump even more because it's kind of like Jay Peak in Northern Vermont nice. and, um, and the up sweep on the, and then I decided to actually I made three that way. And then I took one and I modified it. So it was a little more curvy like Julian's. So it had the uh, a little better profile. And then I started playing with this part here too, you know, curving that up and dishing that out and making it wider because I thought that was, I don't know, fun. And those are all in, in birch, you know, gray birch, white birch. Um, and then I made one in yellow birch. I don't have any, I didn't have any good maple or a good straight grain hardwood. So uh, when I get some of that, I'll make more of these, but this one's probably the one that comes closest to the, um, closest to the template, I'm not sure. And yeah. I really liked them. It's my very first, um, you know, I just started doing Rise Up and Carve a week ago. And so, um, my very first um, spoon challenge design. I didn't use the template. I just looked at it and then went and carved and never never traced it, printed it, never took measurements. So I, um, I've done that in other, in wood turning and things. You kind of look at a, mm -hmm. a bowl from a famous maker and then instead of, you know, then just see what it does in your head. I didn't try to do it on paper or I guess Kevin had printed out the, maybe it wasn't Kevin. No, it was a different fellow who had gotten the template onto plastic. I'll get serious about this one day and, and do that too. <laughs> I'm just having fun. I think both ways are acceptable. I mean, the, the templates there is a guide and a challenge and however you implement that, it's, you know, it's a, absolutely it's up yeah. to you. When I, uh, when I I've, use always, the, I've always done it that way. <laughs> I never, I never print the templates. <laughs> when I use a template, I've draw and redraw it a lot of times. And if the wood is green, the template gets kind of wonky after a while, after pressing it into the green, oh, yeah. so cutting it out of like a plastic, Holder, oh, you know, one of those old plastic holders. That's the best thing I've found that's cheap and available, and then it doesn't get waterlogged. I think this lends itself to some um, cool um, sculptural opportunities. If you have. It, I was going to say, when you held that up, it actually looks almost like a wooden recurve bow, uh, bow you know, like a, a bow and oh. arrow bow. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Following up on what Kevin was just saying about the template and, you know, getting it wet. What I usually do is take packing tape and put packing tape on the front and back of the piece of paper and then cut the template out. So you have ah, a, brilliant. a plasticky template, but it's the paper with center line and everything that's, you know, as the printout is. I like that idea. That's a great idea. I got to try that next time. Cause I usually just like, I'll, I'll, I just print mine out and cut them out, you know, straight. And I, I trace the paper, you know, right. um, but and that's always the problem is they get either wet or they start getting munged up. So that's a great idea. Another thing that I do is I'll write the number on the piece of paper, like in the, in the bowl area before I cut it out. That way I, I can keep track of which one's which because I got a pile of them by now. Yeah, that's and, another uh, good idea. So good thinking. So a couple of tips there. Yep. Awesome. All right. Who has not gone and wants to go next? All right, Russell. Hey. You forgot oh. Louie, Chuck. Oh, Lua, you're right. I'm so sorry. I did say Lua. So hold on, let Lua go, and then we'll then we'll come back to you. Yeah, uh, thanks. That's all right. Um, <laughs> so this is my my first time doing one of these Ruac challenges, and I, I was a bit late deciding that I was actually going to do it. So I axed it out yesterday evening uh, at about ten. So um, it's still pretty green. It's it's green birch. So I, it's it's drying right now. It's waiting for finishing cut. So it it's not too refined, but I. I I found something, I found a really cool feature about these spoons. So I'll show it first. So this is the, I stuck pretty closely to the template. But what I found is that it, if you rest it on a table, it, it immediately, you know, it, it lies very neatly. It stays level very well. Mm. And it lifts up all the, the, the business parts, all the eating parts from the table. So maybe that's another feature for mucky, 
Welsh 19th or 18th century tables that it actually lifts up the ballpark from the table. I don't know. I like that. So that's a, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's what I found. Excellent. I thought you were nice. suggesting the Welsh were mucky people for a moment there. No, it's, it's more the time than the people. Um, what they used to do to, to sort of be the test of a well-designed spoon is, as you say, they would, they would place it on a table and, and see where it made contact on the table. Um, and they would do that on, on the top as well. Um, so the idea was, um, the idea with the, with the cow spoons is they would put it on the table like this and, and you would want it to make contact at three points. You see that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Tail, the hump, and the very tip. Everyone looking down right now. Right. Yeah. So because we're all looking at our spoons. <laughs> you can try that on your spoon and, and see how you did. Epic fail. <clears throat> so if you were an if you were an old Welsh codger and, and you wanted to to look at a cow spoon and see if it was quality, that's what you would do. Um, and and that's uh, that's well attested that, that that was the the tradition. Cool. Interesting. Could be. Yep. It could be not to keep the spoon off the table. It could be that whatever surface you were putting the spoon down on was gross and you wanted to keep the surface off the spoon that was going in your mouth. <laughs> that's, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Keep, keep the, the eating parts clean. Got from it. The table. Yeah. it could be either way, right? Depending on whether you want to keep the table clean or whether you want to keep True. your spoon clean, depending True. on sensibilities of the time. Yeah. Great point. All right. Uh, Russell, you're up. Excellent job, Lua. Hey, you're right. Um, I'm going to add another potential idea as well for the the template. And this was, and I have to give the the, I have to give the. Uh, it was an idea of my girlfriend. So if you, if you take baking paper, you know that kind of translucent paper you put on a tray before you put it in, you can actually use that to trace your template, and you can cut that out, and that's quite um, water resistant as well. Oh, so I found really that works. Is. That worked really, really well. Um, cause I cut mine out about a week ago in a very, you know, in a downpour pretty much. <laughs> so <laughs> that worked really well. So, um, I don't have as many spoons as everybody else has. I had just the one and sadly I had a little bit of an issue as well, okay, but I carried on. There's a small little crack that started forming towards the end. So, um, Mine probably isn't particularly traditional, but Julian, I'd like to thank you. That was an awesome, awesome profile, by the way. And I'll echo what loads of other people have said in that it was really, really good fun to carve something that's kind of so traditional, knowing that, you know, somebody probably used this kind of profile way, way back when. It was quite nice. So mine's cherry. I didn't have any sycamore or anything like that. So sadly, you know, it's got a little bit perhaps more grain than the traditional would have had. But what I tried to do with mine really was kind of stick to, I like the flow of the, of the profile. So I've tried to do a similar thing. I don't know if you can see it. I like the idea of having a flow that goes all the way up. So I've done that with kind of my lines here from the back. Um, and because I discovered after the crack, this this is just really going to be a learning spoon. I thought I'd give it a go for a little bit of chip carving as well. So that's my first go at chip carving. But I, I really enjoyed this. Um, this piece here perhaps is a little bit thicker than perhaps the, the template um, that Suzanne called sturdy, which I like. It's a great, great description. But I really like it, actually. I think it kind of works really well. Mine's quite, quite um, not quite so deep as some of the others, but... That was good fun, and I'll definitely do some more, and I'll try and do some without a crack as well. But yeah, <laughs> that's mine. Awesome. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Excellent job, Russell. Beautiful. All right, who would like to go next? Show of hands. Marcus is waving. Sorry, I froze there for a second. So Marcus, was were you waving? All right, take it away, Marcus. Uh, you're muted, there you go. I thought you were just ignoring me, Chuck. No, sorry, I, I actually froze. So, um, yeah, I really like the template and it's, uh, it's lovely. Lots of nice spoons. So mine, I just did one spoon. So I did it a little bit longer. Um, so it's a bit of a, a sort of serve. You can stir your pot of soup first, 
but it's uh, you, it's still big enough to, to slip out of, sort of side saddle. It's too big to go that <laughs> way, but it's nice to go that way. But um, yeah, they're lovely. It's a lovely template to carve. It's really nice shapes. So I love doing this bit. This bit originally was about that size, but it was just too big. It was like a massive, massive hump. So I brought that down. This bit was a little bit more severe, but uh, calmed that down as well. Um, what else? And I've done a wee, a wee sort of pinch in at the neck, at the, the, the tip there, where it joins. And uh, it was just a really nice spoon template to carve. Quite enjoyed it. I've got, yeah. And you could you could spend you could yeah you can do lots and lots of little fiddly things and little finials and little bits of just nice little notches here and there that would make it yeah really superb and awesome. It was a lovely spoon to 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 carve. So thank you, Julian. Yep, that's it. Excellent, beautiful spoon. Yeah, I would I definitely <laughs> want to do a larger one like that. Yeah, it makes it a great serving spoon. And it was in maple. That was so that was it was. Bloody hard, but yeah. it was, other than that, it was good. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely one of the things I think about this template almost more than just about any other that we've had. Is it just makes such a great? There, there's so many, as you say, like aspects to it that you can play with, yeah. and it's it, it's it's just it's a great base off of which to just kind of go anywhere with. It's really cool. Yeah, it was very nice. Who has not yet gone and is waiting to go? Raise a hand if you'd like to go next. Anybody? Tamir? All right, Tam, you're up. Hey, everybody. Um, so this one's mine. I'm not sure how well you can see it. Um, but yeah, I just did kind of some simple facets. I really had fun with the shape. Um, this is a bit of plum that I got from Michael in Seattle. But my first time carving plum uh, and something funny about this so when I carved it it was very symmetrical so this is the bowl and the handle literally just like cocked out to seven o'clock um, when it dried <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny um, but yeah I really love the design and um, you know just the really interesting profile it was a lot of fun excellent beautiful spoon Thanks, yeah, I've not yet cracked into that plum that you sent me. I think that's got to be my next thing that I'm going to jump into now is start playing with some of that plum, Michael. I really appreciate you sending sending some of that out. Awesome. Okay. Uh, if Has everybody gone? Is there? Oh, no. Sorry, Kaylin. I am so sorry. That's There's okay. too, many, too many boxes. I can't keep track of y'all. <laughs> Take it away, Kaylin. Um. So I had originally intended that I wanted a pair of these because these are one of the neat things about the call spoons is traditionally, if you look through old photos, they also have a little spoon rack that's kind of a box. Mm. And I haven't had a chance to make it yet, but I've got um, a chunk of wood that I'm going to make a little rectangle shrink pot and put a lid on it and then cut notches in to hold a pair of call spoons and do some chip carving. So I'm hoping to get that done in the next week or two. So I wanted a matching set and this is my matching set. Um, I'm just doing the finishing cuts here. So this will be oiled, this one's oiled and this is also plum from Michael. Um, and this for the matching set is also part of just my skill progression. Like mm. I'm still, I'm a newish carver but I feel like I'm getting to the point where now I can feel like I can replicate a shape consistently and that's feeling good. So these turned out really nicely. Um, this is my third one though, because my other matching one, I ended up getting a crack in the handle and had to change the handle um, a bit. So this one is very delicate. Instead of having the handle go wide and then cut in yeah. and take it down, it's just a consistent, very delicate taper up the entire spoon. And then to mimic that, I also created a bit more of a thin tail flip. And so this one, I feel like structurally, since it's hard plum, it feels like it'll hold up to a brothy soup. Um, but I have a friend who's a foodie and a very delicate eater. So I think I'm gonna send this out to her. But nice. it was a really lovely spoon shape. Um, 
I wouldn't do a fourth in plum. My hands are killing me to be <laughs> Um, I think I'm, I'm done with these for a little while, but um, I was working on graceful and this template, I think has such nice lines as everyone was talking about a lot of opportunity to practice that within a spoon. Yeah, you achieved it. Those are so graceful. Yeah, they look gorgeous. Really, the really nice. one has such nice color gradation in it. The, yeah. The, the, yeah, there's one that's orangier than the rest. And on the screen, it might be the lighting, I don't know, but it's a really it's nice like yellow to orange tones. Yeah, it has some nice ones. I'll try and take some photos. I'm running a little behind. Um, and then they're pretty good. This is plum. So they like each one has a little quirk like this one, the bowl decided to twist this way. The other one, the, the handles a little twisted because this plum really likes to dance. They uh, look remarkably identical from here. They look yeah. really nice. Yeah, they really do. You like do your idea a lot. I'm going to steal your idea of doing a set, a pair. Yeah. I think they look nice in a set. And then like, if you get a little rack uh, in a kitchen, like you said, yeah. Kevin, they're just like impressive looking spoons. And Sean, you as well, your kids came up and were really excited about these. I think these are spoons that people will be interested in. And my boyfriend and I drink a lot of brothy soups, but it's more like pho and ramen. And mm. so I think it'll be neat to try these with those soups, even though we have dedicated ramen spoons um and i did find some traditional call recipes so i'm going to try that out once these uh are cured which will be fun so thank you julian for the yeah nice salt and water right uh, salt and water yeah salt and water <laughs> salt and water excellent salt yeah. and water maybe, maybe a turnip or a piece of potato very easy recipe <laughs> <laughs> you, awesome. you can dress it up as much as you like all right i if I'm not mistaken now, everybody has had a chance to go except for myself, correct? Have we gotten everybody? I think so. Okay, so this was my first one uh, in Maple. Um, I was, oh, and now it's probably cracked. Uh, anyway, uh, my first one in Maple, and I was having a lot of fun, especially with just kind of trying to mimic that swoop because I was trying to angle it down to a bit of a narrower keel around the bottom there, but at the same, and then narrow it towards the top, but leave a little bit of thickness in the middle just to leave strength. Um, and then I was really happy to find that this maple has a little bit, the camera, this camera probably won't pick it up too much, but there's, there's a bit of ripple in there, uh, which is really nice looking. I tried to leave sort of a tapering the sides down to leave it to a point coming down the center on it. Um, and I was really pleased. This is one of the first times you won't be able to see it because I don't have the light behind it, but I actually got this bowl thin enough to be somewhat translucent uh, in portions of it. So, um, and I actually used this spoon for the first time last night to eat, uh, eat my dinner. And I really did not, I, I was very skeptical that I would like this spoon in use because it's so big and so wide. And I found that actually, like, it's almost like I use it as like a three quarters. So you get like three quarters of the spoon and from like a, as a, at a diagonal and it works great. It was awesome. So I was really, really happy to find that it, it was better in use than I thought it would be. Um, and with, and this was a thicker, stewier kind of a, a soup. It wasn't so much a thin soup and a brothy soup. Um, so I can imagine with the brothy soup, especially, you know, it'll be perfect, you know, for that. Um, anyway, yeah, just a lot of fun with it. So then what I wanted to try, I, I did, I did create um, two other variations off of it. One being a, a circle was, and so I, and I did two of these with a slightly different shape on the handle going more for sort of a leaf, you know, kind of a handle shape. And then I wanted to do one that was exactly halfway in between the circle and in between the full oval uh, of the template. And so, and I haven't gotten a chance to carve that one yet, um, but I'm kind of seeing that as sort of like splitting the difference. And I'm curious to see how that will work. Um, but I did carve two. Um, I, the first one that I attempted was also in, in maple. And when I carved this one, I posted a picture of it. I ended up splitting off 
a chunk off of one side of it. But last night I managed to somewhat rescue it. It's still not really circular. It's a, it's sort of wonky, not a nicely balanced asymmetrical, but just a wonky asymmetrical that wasn't going for <laughs> asymmetrical uh, shape. But I managed to get a spoon out of it and it actually, I think will work quite nicely. But I was really happy with the shape of the handle and uh, just playing with that, it's got a nice smoothness to it. Again, I, I kind of did sort of trying to mirror the faceting along the side of mirroring the hump. Um, this one also has some ripple, uh, even more pronounced, I think, than the first one. Um, so yeah, so I had a lot of fun with that. And then I started carving another one, and this one is also maple, but this was the one that I did in dry, this was, some of my stinky water maple, I have, maybe this is maple that had been sitting in a bucket of water for two years. Um, so it was really, really smelly, really nasty. Um, and I had taken a piece out and split it and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, ended up leaving a portion of it out. And so it got completely dried out. But I took that, got, got a blank axed out of completely dried maple and then boiled the blank and it was right back to being carvable uh, with, with no problem. I was actually shocked um, at how wet it got completely saturated through and through. Um, and I, it worked quite well. Uh, and now that it's dry, no stink. And uh, it, 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 again, I'm, I, just a lot of fun. I went with the same sort of you know, handle shape on this one, uh, but I was interested to see the color variation between the one that was carved wet versus the one that was carved dry. This did not have any other like baking soda or roasting or anything done to it. Um, but that was just because the wood had dried out, it got that color. So anyway, that's, uh, that was, those were my spoons. A lot of fun. Thank you, Julian. This was an awesome, awesome uh, Ruax spoon challenge. Uh, not least of all because of your demos and your discussions of the history as everyone has else has noted. It was just uh, really a, a lot of fun. So thank you. Uh, big round of applause to Julian for all of his work and for all of his uh, uh, effort in uh, getting us all up to speed on Welsh cowl spoons. So, and thank you, a huge round of applause to all of you for your excellent participation. I'm, I, I'm continuing to be very impressed at how much everybody is really jumping on this and, and having a lot of fun with it. So before we dive into the Instagram posts, which for any that want to stick around, I will go through whoever has posted to the hashtag. I do want to announce that our next spoon challenge, you're going to love this. If you haven't gone up to riseupandcarve.com on the template page to look at it yet, this one is by Oren, Owen, uh, our Israeli uh, uh, snail lover extraordinaire, uh, just an amazing carver. He's got a lot of fun finials for us to play around with. So this one's gonna get very uh, very fun with the uh, finial decoration. And uh, it's a beautiful uh, spoon form. Uh, Sonny's holding it up there if you're not seeing it. He's got it. Yeah, just, it yeah. just to show and tell, there's, there is a really nice small spoon for the template as well as some excellent designs for finials, including um, a heart for Valentine's Day, since this will be a February 13th uh, show and tell. And uh -huh. uh, you know, look forward to it. Orin, Orin did a great job of setting this up and really made it easy to, to get it posted online with a really pretty design. Orin's not here anymore, right? I'm going to talk. No, he had to, he had to sign off. Uh, he could only stick around for like 10, 15 minutes. So. I'm going to try to talk Orin into doing a little demo on the like relief carving of the of the figure so if anyone else wants to help me browbeat Oren into a demo you know you please. read my mind sir because I, that's exactly what I was thinking too so yep <laughs> I, I definitely want to get him to do a, a demo on carving his snail uh uh finial that would be awesome right um, I can't get him to give away all of his secrets yeah yeah, and, and he also laid out a nice pattern on there for the facets on the, the top of the handle. That looks like that's going to be really challenging, too. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd actually like to get him to do a demo of, of how he, he achieves that as well. Because I've, I've, I've sort of played with it, but I, I can never get those lines to look right, to look straight. Um, 
All right, so with that, then I'm going to share my screen and we will start uh, working our way through the Instagram uh, posts. So, so Chuck, um, I'm wondering yes. if uh, on, on the color of your two spoons, I'm wondering if you discovered what color two-year-old stink is. Oh, maybe, the, the, <laughs> and it's actually quite a lovely color. I actually really <laughs> like it. <laughs> but, well, it looks like it's been soaked in coffee. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, this one sat in water for just as long Oh. And yet, when you carve away the surface, the surface was super slimy, but when you carve it away, it's right back to a, a beautiful, creamy, white maple color. Oh. So the color did not, like in, in the one that I carved wet, it didn't have that. But apparently, just by letting it sit and dry and then re-soaking it, like, by, like I said, I reboiled it, yeah. it a, achieved this very uniform color as cool. if it was like evenly roasted or as if it was painted with the baking soda mixture. Um, yeah, cool. Maybe maybe you have to rethink uh, the way you do the dishes <laughs> and you maybe. clean up your pots. <laughs> That's right. Like I always tell people, like I always get upset when I come up and find one of my precious spoons left soaking in the pot in the sink. And I'm like yelling at my wife and kids like, stop leaving them soaking in water. Well, who knows? Maybe that's <laughs> wrong. Maybe we should soak our spoons more. Maybe, maybe it's the iron from the pot you boiled it in. Uh, it's, it wasn't an iron pot. It was an aluminum pot. But uh, yeah, maybe that. I don't know. Maybe. maybe. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Have to as well, aluminum is also a mordant for shifting colors and dye. As well, ah, a lot well, there you go. Dye. Then we use uh, an aluminum pot. To shift the color lighter so it'd be interesting if you put it in an iron pot and see if it goes darker that's very interesting it's i'll try that with the metal and bacteria in the water maybe like yeah hey chuck i think for about five show and tells in a row you've said i didn't think this shape was going to work well but it works really well it's, so it's I, really cool i think the lesson there is that we can't trust your judgment at all Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. I, I appreciate that, my friend. Hey, and then there's this oh, no. other thing we should, that... We should emulate your openness to try things. That's what, that's, that's what I meant to say. Because oh, yes, actually, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice save. So there's this other thing also uh, for Rise Up and Carf. It's called Rise Up and Cook. Yes. And um, since you're all here, I would like to ask you for your favorite local recipe so that we can uh, compile a recipe book and have it uh, published eventually in a hardcover book uh, that other people can buy. And we're going to call it Spoon Food from Rise Up and Carve or something like that. But uh, you can just send it to me uh, via um well i don't know if it's really easy to put it on the uh instagram uh chat but you can send it to me by mail just ask me my email address and then uh still working on getting it on the website so uh, just asking you all the most favorite local dish that you can eat with a spoon so that's it. Awesome. Yes, thank you so much, Andreas, for, for I totally forgot. I, I wanted to highlight that. Really glad you brought it up because I totally forgot. Um, so yeah, so just send your recipes uh, to Andreas. Either you can reach out to him, get his email address to send it that way or via Instagram direct message. Uh, you can you know send it that way. Um, he's going to be compiling these. We're going to be posting them to the Rise Up and Carve site uh, we, we're building out another page on the site similar to the template page. It'll be like the same thing, but we'll do a PDF of each recipe um, and it'll be there for you to download as well. Um, and then once we get a, a few of them, maybe we'll like accumulate them for like, a, I don't know, a period of time. And then I'm not sure, like we have to figure out Andreas. Uh, I think he's, you have some place where you can send it and like they'll do the books on demand, so to speak. Yeah, well, we'll okay. see. We'll see. We'll figure it out. But if not, we can we can compile them all there, mm -hmm. and people yeah. can download you know them individually. So uh, so again, your favorite spoon food, awesome, and thank you, Andreas, for for spearheading that. 
does it have to be a local recipe, Andreas, or could it just be like a favorite recipe? No, just do your favorite. I mean, it would be, it's cool. What we want to do is try and get recipes from like, since we have an inter, a big international, you know, grouping here, it would be nice to get recipes from all over, um, you know, but, but, you could do, and you don't have to just do one. You can do, you know, you can send a couple. Um, the only so thing I don't want to see is like macaroni and cheese, please. What's wrong with macaroni and cheese? That's a perfect spoon food, dude. <laughs> I mean, uh, to be honest with you, I, like, we, were, we were actually thinking, I was, we were talking about this when we were playing around with the idea. It's like, is there anything that you can't eat with a spoon? Like Solid. you could eat a steak, you can eat a steak with a spoon. You just have to pre-cut it. If your steak, if your spoon has a point on it, you could hold the steak down with the point and then use a knife. The pocket mm -hmm. knife. There you it. go. Or if your spoon's got a flat end, Kevin. Or a flat end. Yep, that's true. The only <laughs> one that I was thinking of was uh, was salad, possibly. But even that, I think you could do a chopped salad. I've been on a pre-chopped, and then you can eat it with a spoon. I've been trying to eat everything with a spoon and the salads, you need a, a wide bowl so that the salad pieces don't fall off. And then mm. it's fine. The one I don't like is spaghetti because I like to twirl the spaghetti. It's the only oh. one I don't. Spaghetti. That's, what, that's when you would, would use a spork, right? Yeah, but the spork doesn't twirl. Try it. it yeah, the, twi the tines aren't deep enough for I'm it to trying. get a good twirl. Yeah. Then you should make deeper tines. I've thought about making <laughs> well, a spoon. There is that. Uh, Julian's would work. <laughs> I've thought about making a spoon that just has two or three tines on the handle. So you could turn it upside down for spaghetti, but that's kind of cheating. Indeed. All right. Anyway, I'm gonna... off. So see All you right. later. Cheerio. Late. For any of the, uh, you know, have other things to do, feel free to drop whenever you need to drop. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we will take a run through the Instagram photos. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. So uh, we'll start us off here. So th oh, this was just Julian's, I think, announcement. Um, that's just, yep, about putting up the video. So that was my first one as I was starting to X out the, the first spoon that I did. I was actually checking the moisture content on it because it was the stinky water wood. So you can see there it was at almost 25% moisture content. There's my uh, templates that I was planning to do until I cut my finger and could, didn't get a chance to do them all. Hey, that's interesting, Chuck. What's the water? Have you ever checked the water content of a green spoon when it's fresh? Um, I have not. As in when, it, when it's first cut from the tree? Yeah, I'd like to... Yeah, I'd like I, to get Yeah, it. I haven't. I literally just got the moisture meter at Christmas. So oh, cool. I've, cool. I've not had a chance to play with it much yet. That must be a, quite different between species and also what time of year when yep. you cut down. Uh, I had uh, once of uh, I made a bowl out of willow. I hate working with willow, but that's what I had. And it was mm. splashing with water. It was uh, cut down yeah. in the spring. Yeah. Yeah, there's times like I've seen where I've had, like even with this wood, when I was first starting to carve it, like you can see the water squeezing out as you're drawing the knife across the, the, the wood. It's amazing. There's actually some woods that have over 100% water, con water content when, when green is the right time of year. Wow, over 100%? How can you get over 100%? More wood the, than water. More water than wood. More water than wood. Wow. All right, Smiling Frog Wood Studio. That's the one where he carved through the bowl. Yeah, that was Sean, I think, right? Um, I actually came close. I like on. I didn't realize when I was doing my first one. I when I started seeing the light coming through, I thought that I had gone way. I was really afraid that I was going to go all the way through the wood. Oh, the other thing I forgot to say about this is. I really enjoyed carving this bowl using a Tuka cam. It's like shocker, right? Who would have thought a Welsh hook knife to carve a Welsh call spoon? It was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, I digress. Uh, so that's Jody. Whoops, sorry. Where was I? 
Jody, roughing hers out. Fraser, Cherry Cowlspoon, up in snowy Scotland. Wanderings and Wit in Lancashire. Not sure who this is. Oh, is this the gentleman who had the squared? Looks like this one's slightly squared off. I think that, I forget his name. Oh, Darren. It's Darren, I think, right? Oh, Jeff Fryett. Somebody had a disaster. First one failed. What kind of wood was that, did he say? Uh, I don't see it. Really pretty wood. I think it was right? due to that knot in the right yeah, of that. Yeah, I think so too. I'm, I'm betting it was similar up there. It looks like there were a couple knots in that area as well. Really pretty. It looks really colorful. Yeah, it does. All that exotic New Zealand wood. Oh nice. yeah, he's the guy that's always carving exotic New Zealand wood. That's right. Sean with his pineapple and his pierced spoons. Awesome. Yeah. Yep, that was Darren with the squarish old one. Really nice. Oh, that was my black and white shots of the first one that I did while I was still somewhat in process. Nice. I really love the painting on that, Suzanne. Really nice job. I, I really love the painting. It was absolutely gorgeous. What a contrast yeah. to her. I'd like to see this spoon with a punk rock spoon right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that one anymore. It's in England now. <laughs> what a difference in the aesthetic. This one looks right. like yeah. better oh, yeah. garden. This one's like a better homes and garden spoon. <laughs> I, like, I really like this. It's it's like a folk art kind of aesthetic, which I, I yeah. think works very well on this spoon. I yeah. totally agree. Like it reminds me really much of the, you, know, you get the art on um, canal barges here in the UK. Yeah. Mm. Like a, the, it's like a uh, Cobell, Swiss Cobell. Mm, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Beautiful job. Thank you. No, I wish I had the I wish I had the talent to paint, but I do not. There you can see how I got that pretty thin. This is uh, just my glamour shots. It's interesting to me the way that different people approach the back of the bowl without much information from me. Because um, uh, it seems like the majority of people did it quite differently than the way I do, which is which is always interesting to me. And a few people contacted me saying, hey, how do you do this bit? Um, and everyone's, everyone's spoon sort of turned out a bit different. That was a really tricky part to kind of get figured out, like what to do there. Um, I found because I, I found that I kept ending up having so much thickness at the back there that I, I didn't want it to be quite that thick. But I felt mm -hmm. like if I kept narrowing it down, I was going to get I was I wasn't going to leave enough for strength where it joins the neck. So I was constantly struggling with how much to like how much to take off there. But I didn't want a keel because I remember you mentioning that you didn't you know like having a keel coming out off it. So I didn't want to go too shallow with shoulders on either side, so. I felt a lot of stress about where to pinch the the, wide, the tallest part of the handle that's like the keel that's on the top of the spoon. Mm. Where to, how do I pinch it at the top? Do I pinch it at the bottom? Like, where is it thick? Where is it? Well, narrow? that's why I ended up pinching it both. I stressed, okay. about that, I stressed about that a lot because I felt like it really would affect the aesthetic of the spoon and I couldn't undo it. Yeah. In the end, I did too, Chuck. I think in the end, I pinched in both spots, and I'm happy with it. Yeah, me too. And there I am using my uh, tooker. So it, it works great. It works perfect for those spoons. Andreas. Hi, 
<laughs> it's your nemesis. Nice. <laughs> Andreas is now regrinding those tools. <laughs> right. Oops. Ah, oh, shoot. Ah, Aaron clicks. Stop it. Where were we there? Okay, so now we come here. Jeff Fryad, going for your clock uh, layout there, uh, Kevin. Oh, what a ripoff. <laughs> I, I like, like that. He, have, he doesn't have all the numbers. Yeah, he doesn't have them all, but. Uh, and he didn't disassemble his wife's favorite clock to make his New Year's Day joke. <laughs> wow, that's really cool looking. There we go. That's our call spoon. Cowl spoon. It's cowl? I keep forgetting it's, how it's, you say it. It's cowl as in towel. Okay, cowl. All right. There it is. That's an interesting variation on the shape. I like that. Mm. I like that too. That's an interesting idea. I like that shape. That's cool. Sebastian, really, really beautiful job. The um, the decoration is is impressive, but um, I I appreciate the the side profile on this one is is spot on. It yeah. Just right. Thank you. I can resist adding some shapes. Even yeah. though it was, I wasn't supposed to, but yeah. Wow, it looks okay. great. As I, as I said, of, it's a great opportunity to do what you like. Was this, what kind of paint is this? This is acrylic paint. I dilute it with water so it sets into the grain. I never gotcha. like to have a thick paint on it. Yeah, I agree. Because it looks too plasticky. It looks, it, you know, when, when, when you, it's just thick paint. Um, in general, I kind of like this wash effect. Um, you know, it's almost more like a stain than a than a paint. It's nice. It's Although, like then again, on, Sus spoon. on Suzanne's spoon, her. I mean, did you? I forget. Is Suzanne still on? Did you yeah. use? Yeah, I'm here. Did you use acrylic? Um, yes, but it's a special kind uh, of acrylic paint. It's used here in Switzerland to paint um, your wooden furniture which was a trend a few years back. Okay. So like, um, uh, uh, Cause it, cause it too didn't look as plasticky as a lot of acrylic that I see when it dries. It can mm -hmm. look very kind of plasticky, which I don't like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've made these before with milk painted handles, which I quite enjoy because as um, Sebastian was saying, it's more like a wash, more like a stain than, yeah. um, than a, a coat of paint. I'll, I'll actually get one to show you. Um, Here's another one I finished just a few days ago um, with a slightly smaller bowl. Uh, and that's got a bit of milk paint. Turn the camera around. I know um, Chuck is sharing his screen, so maybe I'll show yeah, you. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Is there an option to show both, like the speaker and the shared screen simultaneously? I can see both. I can see this. I can see your shared screen and then. When Julian was talking, I could see his um, screen. Oh, okay, cool. It is. It's a setting. Me somewhere. too. Yeah. Anyway, if you've got that turned on, um, then here is that screen. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Very cool. Beautiful so, job, Sebastian. You can see the grain through. Yeah, I like the look of that a lot. All right, continue. I don't know why that one's showing up. I don't think that's not tagged with. That's what I'm wondering. I'm, I'm not seeing the tag in oh, maybe down. It's there. not in the comments. We were joking about being late for homework. Ah, OK. Ah, this is Neil's. Yeah, this one's Neil's. I, I actually uh, was hanging out with Neil the other day um, and saw this spoon. And uh, it's, a, it's a great spoon. It's a bit of black locust. Um, 
and he got it very nice and thin in some spots with like a sort of triangle shaped handle section where it thins down yeah um, i'm sure you'll see in the photos but it gets um oh and if you think maple's hard <laughs> yeah i was gonna yeah, say anyone, man, I've got i don't know if anyone here. if anyone's ever tried to carve a spoon out of black locust but i've carved a couple and it's uh, it's really hard work yeah i've got a bunch of it i've got like three huge sections of the the tree trunk that are stacked up out in my side yard that i was hanging on to for like doing legs for chopping blocks and stuff like that because it's super rot resistant so it's yeah, no, great and it's um super good for knife handles i always make my knife handles yep. out of black locust. yeah i have all my um my uh what do you call it the swan neck gouges with uh, black locust handles so I may try it because it's just so striking looking. I may try doing some spoons out of it. It's really cool. It doesn't, I mean, I've turned a lot of bowls from black locusts and that's rare coloration. That's really Oh, cool. is it? Yeah. Yeah. There's Sometimes normally you get a, those, black, those black parts um, where the sapwood meets the heartwood, but that one looks quite distinctive because he's yeah, got it radially split. Creamy sapwood, almost, it, the yellowish um, heartwood will turn greenish with time and often mm. a gray or green line in between, but that's remarkable color. Yeah. It's probably not going to stay as vibrant like that. Like, um, I've got this knife handle that I made from Black Locust and with time and use, you see how it sort of mellows out and grays out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's what that's what most of mine, the, where I had, uh, I have uh, this one. This where Black is that? Locust. Here's a, here's a, I just finished up this coal rosing knife. Uh, you can't see that it's a coal rosing knife, but it is. Um, and you can see how the color will um, will darken and, and get a bit. <coughs> the thing is, actually, if you, this if... one, like I, I am noticing, I do have somewhat those lines oh, in there. Okay. Well, if you, if you bake a spoon and you, you hang out in like a, a, a you know, a bed noir kind of a nightclub and you, and you pull out your spoon to eat your, it glows in the dark. It glows in uh, under black light. Oh wow! Black locust glows a brilliant green. <laughs> it's cool. Oh wow! <laughs> That's cool. All right, Nina spoons. My attempt at Ruax spoon challenge fifteen using mulberry at the beach. Apparently, I guess that's the only one that's the spoon. Pretty spoon, very creamy looking wood. Here's Kamal. Nice. Newport Wales, my fish and fire 84. Does anybody know who this is? I like that. It's a pretty spoon. Yeah. My fish on fire. My fish is on fire. Baltimore spoons. Yeah, this is Evan. He's been joining a lot in the last week. He's from. Oh, Baltimore. really? Yeah, he's from Baltimore. He hangs out in a cabin in West Virginia on the weekends. He's a cool guy. Nice. When when has he been getting on? I think in the evenings. I saw him comment on something on Rachel's post, and I was like, "Dude, why do I need to meet Baltimore Spoon?" Who right. Me. <laughs> I yeah. saw him. Like, I saw him like really every day lately uh, around in the afternoon here. So. Oh wow! I gotta start getting on in the afternoon more. The afternoon. Here we go, Brad. No, it's, 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 it's your lunchtime, I think. Nice. Uh, and that was uh, one of the other ones that I was, that's the darker looking one that I was working on. Anyway, that was the one that I had the, the split out there. Oh, and actually I didn't say it, but I have a small crack in the back of the shoulder of the darker one as well, but it's not split through. So I think I can actually get away with using it. Um, 
but that was not this one was because of an error in X strike. I don't know if this one because I don't I was being really careful with this one after having cracked that one when I was axing this one out of the dry maple. I don't think I had any errant X strike in it. So and it, it that crack wasn't there as I was carving. It was only as I dried it um, after reboiling it to wet it to make it easy to carve. So maybe the the cycling back and forth between the maybe it was just drying too fast and somehow that introduced a check in there anyway. Ooh, there. That's a gorgeous wow. piece of wood. That's a pretty, pretty bowl. Yeah. Spalted sweet birch. That is beautiful. I like the shape of it too. Birch. I don't wow. Know what, I don't know what sweet birch is. I think, isn't that what they also call, uh, it's yellow, isn't it yellow birch? Sweet birch and river birch are all pretty much the same. Now, river birch is the with the peely, the real peely bark. And yellow birch, I thought, is actually really yellow, and the bark is really yellow in color. Mm, uh, no, yellow birch actually. Is river birch and yellow birch the same thing? I think so. I could be wrong. I, I river don't birch, know. river birch is peely, like you said, Kevin. Like, really, but that's really... as it, but that's as it gets older. When it's young, it's actually a, a very dark. Um, a very dark bark while it's young. It's as it ages that it starts doing that. River birch is popular around here. People plant it on purpose in their landscapes because it's pretty, but it doesn't, it's not wild here. So I wonder where he's getting birch in Baltimore or West Virginia. I'll have to ask him. He's probably yeah, out in West Virginia, maybe. Well, black birch definitely grows down. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm thinking black birch, not yellow birch. Um, so I was, I was just going to in, imply that river birch and black birch, I believe, are the same species grown in different environments, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Mm. I think th it's related to yellow birch, but they're not the same as yellow. I actually really like this with the pointed keel like that, Brad. I think that's kind of a, that's a really cool. I agree. Look for that. Mm. Then yeah, I, made I like the, the, the angular. The there, I made it look like JP the. Uh, Ski mountain right on the Canadian border. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. The other thing that I found, Julian, between yours and Julian's, and you you catch it more, is that extreme like flip right at the end. Like mine's more of a of a like a continuous curve uh, type of a flip. Whereas Julian, I noticed it's it's it, it, there's a slight curve, but then there's that extreme flip right at the end, and. <laughs> I like I don't see that on the template. Yeah, that, that, there. It's, it's, um, this spoon, this the template spoon, doesn't really have that that extra. Oh, uh, okay. But um, I'll come and I'll go and get one that does so you can that, see the difference. Yeah, yeah, I was inspired by that old historical spoon that didn't show a lot yeah, of wear, his, but it had a quite a yeah. curve. But that's very short grain. I mean, that's likely to break if we don't take care of it. Yeah. It's kind of cool. It's really cool looking though. I like that look. I liked your comment about it looking like the the, the side profile of a cross country ski. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, here's one I carved a while back. Um, yeah. And that has almost a flat handle with a little flip at the end. Yeah. Uh, and I really like using this one um, because it it rests very naturally under your thumb and it's yeah. very flippy, which I enjoy. This spoon is not great for a few reasons, but it's very nice to use. I quite like the bowl shape on this one. Nice. Yeah, I, can't, I really like that a lot. You can see how my spoons have um, sort of been a bit more. Uh, yeah. There's Kate. Gosh, she always takes such lovely photographs. Thank you. You still there? I'm sorry, I'm talking about you in the third person as if you're not here. <laughs> <laughs> really, you always manage to get such awesome backgrounds for your photos. Really, really nice. I also like that asymmetry. I mean, it just looks like somebody was going to finish that spoon no matter what. And the fact that it's slightly wonky is 
fine. It's a usable, it's a utilitarian item. You know? Yeah. Really nice. Puggy. Maple cowl spoon. I like that he how he said it and did it with a bowl. Nice, nice shot. A pretty bowl. Jody. That's a nice. Yeah, I like I like when you get it off center like that. It's a really cool look with the grain in the bowl. Pretty. Really nice. Yeah, Jody had a close up of the knife finish in the bowl that I thought looked really good. This? Yeah. Looks really consistent and smooth. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. How are you brave enough to put that in the oven? <laughs> I didn't put that one in the oven. That was the baking soda one, but I did put the, the other one in the oven. I just watched it really carefully. And I... Um, I covered because the bowl is quite thin, so um, I wrapped aluminum foil around the bowl. It's really nice and even. Thank you. Yeah, beautiful job. Ian, there we go. Now we can really see his spoons. Nice. Ian or Marcus or any of our any of our Scottish friends that are here, is there a traditional Scottish spoon? I don't know of one. I am. Um, this is tangential, but I read a very very interesting scholarly article about um, the like Irish horn spoons. So these aren't obviously aren't wooden spoons, but it's it's spoons that are made out of um, buffalo horn or a similar horn and they're, they're quite a distinctive Irish tradition. Mm. I think in Scotland the traditional wooden wear is, is more like the the cups and, and uh, cages and stuff like that. They have the spurtle which is traditional yeah. for making porridge which is not quite a spoon but. Right and clubs you know to hit people with. Yeah, <laughs> cudgel. <laughs> yeah, no, beautiful wooden whiskey cups. Yeah. Mm. How is that pronounced? I don't know. Don't ask me. I can spell it, but I couldn't pronounce it. I assume it's quaich or or cage. Quick. Yeah. Quick. Quick. Yes, yeah, so you need you need the, the, the same as a loch. It's that it's that C H okay. Yeah. Beautiful spoon. Craig's very, very good at doing quakes. If you have a have a look at Craig, Craig does yeah, Craig. really well. Mm. Really, really beautiful spoon. More poggy. Cherry and maple in an apple bowl, sadly not made by myself. It was a present about 10 years ago from my parents who got it on a Christmas market near where I live. Can you remember when such markets were allowed to take place? <laughs> that is a pretty big chunk of apple. Right, to get a bowl that size, yeah. Beautiful. Nice. Russell. I really like the, the, the sort of the oval, the sort of longer or wider rather oval bowls and I, I wish I'd gone a wee bit 
a wee bit more wider. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. It really is that the, the, the like I forget who was saying it that their kids were really uh, struck by it. Um, it. It's a very arresting form. It really catches the eye and it draws you in because there's just so many cool sweeps and curves and uh, it was shown facets and and all of that. But at the same time, I think when you pick it up, you know immediately what it's for. Like it has a YouTube yeah. And of, yeah. Yeah, totally. Oh, it's a beautiful spoon, Marcus. Yeah, Marcus, I like that, that kind of intermediate size. I think it's a good. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to go back. That's what I'm, I'm kind of, that's what I wanted to play around with by trying to split the difference between a perfect circle with inside of Julian's original and then split the difference to get something that's sort of in between the two size wise yeah. and shape wise. Looks like almost what I think of as like a gravy spoon. Really nice. And that's just the photos that I think I took today. George, beautiful. If you were online with George while he was carving one of these, you heard some German swear words. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I got to tell you, that thinner one is really pretty spectacular. I. I I think that's a gorgeous spoon. I don't know. I, I really like it. I just had problems while axing them out, but not while carving them. And I think the tricky cam really fits them. So I use the monotonock, which is like also like quite quite just a round shape hook yeah. knife. Yeah. And it just it's, like I found that my the curve on the monotonock was not quite it I guess it worked fine on the larger form, but I found that when I got down to the small round ones. Um, yeah. that I had a harder time with it because it wasn't, it was still a little too open that it would catch on the sides. Anyway. Yeah, but this, this round shape is from, from the tweaker cam or, or this hook knife, yeah. just you cuts and you're done with the bone. Yeah, yeah, it really works great. Sunny, nice shot. I like, I like these ones as well. These are, these are lovely as well. I love, look at that curve, how it just flows, right? Like that, that's a great shot to emphasize that. That's so cool. Sonny, you said the grain was pretty straight on that, right? And that curve came from cutting it in. Is this Sonny still on? Yeah, that's what happens with when you try to get that split right down the bowl and then you make a bowl a curve. Yeah, great green looks curved. Yeah, but that one of yours, uh, hey, did you post pictures of it? Because I haven't seen anything yet. I hadn't, I didn't really carve these during the template challenge, I carved them before, but I'll post a picture of all three of mine and hashtag it. Yeah, do it because uh, that one in Walnut really just blows me away the way you right. got that. That's such a cool, uh, the way you played with that grain in that is, is that was that would have been perfect for our grain challenge two weeks ago. I showed different like walnut spoons, yeah. I like the longer handle on this too. I think that's a good idea, extending the handle a little more. Yeah, it's still really comfortable. I wondered if it would be too long and awkward, but it's still really comfortable. Now, there's a lovely spoon, isn't it? Right, freaking show off. <laughs> Far too much. <laughs> I'm back, by the way. <laughs> Oh no, he's back! No, he's back. <laughs> so the, the one thing you can't eat with the spoon is snails. <laughs> That's right. I, I've got a snail, a snail song, a snail spoon song, which I'm I'm just gonna sort of uh, I might be able to to do it at the next uh, the next spoon challenge. Oh, that would be awesome! Yeah, do it. <laughs> this one is a snail anyway. That is can't a wait. gorgeous spoon, on. Thank you. Yeah, something else. That's amazing. Ugh. 
Absolutely gorgeous. Really, really spectacular. Nice, there it is with the little tie. I love it. And I, I, the, the wee tie is gorgeous. I love that as well. Yeah, that's really nice. There's such a so many different spoons, and they're all they're all totally awesome. It's amazing. Right? Like everybody has their own like way of playing with it. It's really cool. That's a beautiful spoon. Yeah, there the, we the, go. This that, one really yeah. blows me away. It's if Sonny's it's still around. I don't know if he's still around, but this one just I that's just so striking and eye-catching with the angles and the diamond and catching that up there. That's really cool. That's a cracker, yeah. Look at that. Oh wow. Oh, it's so awesome. Really, really cool spoons. Beautiful shots too. Nice. That's crisp nice. as well. That's lovely. Right? Beautiful, beautiful work, Ryan. Really, really nice. Beautiful pictures too. Yeah, a really nice picture. Right? People, some people just managed to really get great shots. Ah, oh, there we go. Neil, <laughs> that's that black locust. Really nice. Dustin. That's pretty. I like that there. There we go. Nice, Julian. That's it. That's all she wrote, folks. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And uh, thank you, everyone. This was awesome. I'm going to stop recording, and uh, I'll get it posted up to uh, YouTube, hopefully tomorrow, probably. It takes a while for them to finish processing these things. So I'm going to end the recording and farewell. We'll catch you for the next one in uh, three weeks. I was going to say, do we have a date for the next one? Yes, it is February 13th, Saturday, February 13th, day before Valentine's Day. Uh, and it's Owen's uh, template. And uh, we're going to have lots of fun with finials. Oh, and Owen, now that you're back, people were asking, would you be willing to do a demo of carving your snail finial or carving yeah any relief or any yeah sure. no problem okay so maybe we could schedule yeah. that um next next saturday yeah that would be perfect i'll i'll, I'll uh dm you and then yeah, I'll, we'll then talk I'll, about yeah we'll do a post okay cool